Florida wide receiver Ricky Pearsall is a player that you should be avoiding in your dynasty leagues. We will explain why on this episode of the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. You can read her at Pro Football Focus and Behind the Steel Curtain. On today's show, we are taking a look at Florida wide receiver Ricky Pearsall, who is very well liked in the dynasty community and in the draft Twitter community. We're going to be taking, taking a look at his value, some player comps, some analytics, and the tape. Okay, I think we're going to differ, disagree on this prospect <laughs> quite a bit because for me, he is somebody that I am not targeting in my dynasty leagues. But I want to know, what did you see from him when you saw him on tape? Yeah, let's talk about Ricky Pearsall. So fifth year senior, spent the first three seasons of his career with Arizona State before transferring to Florida for his final two seasons. He is a bit on the older side, and that is a big play with Brandon Ayuk. Yeah, like just he's a little old. He's uh, 23, uh, going to turn 24 here, like right at the start of the NFL season, uh, which 24 years old for a rookie wide receiver. That's definitely on the older side. Um, 6'1", 189 pounds. So like has a little bit more of that height, but still a more general compact frame. A really explosive player. Now I, you know, posted a, a senior high or a career high 65 catches, 965 receiving yards in his final season with Florida. But like generally speaking, not a guy that ever took over uh, any respective offense, even at Arizona State, career high in his junior season, 13 catches, 48, uh, or sorry, uh, 48 catches, 580 receiving yards, four touchdowns over 13 games, uh, which, you know, you, you want to see him take over, take over an offense, right? Um, again, a, a lot on the older side, but what you like about Ricky Pearsall as a receiver is the athleticism, ran a four, uh, four, four, one 40 yard dash, 88th percentile or higher in terms of vertical jump, broad jump, three cone drill, 20 yard shuttle. Like I think offers a lot in terms of him being an overall athlete projects as a slot wide receiver here at the next level. But one that I think has a lot of, you know, solid ball handling skills deeper down the field than you would guess for a guy that NFL analysts or, or draft analysts are calling a slot only receiver at the next level. All right. Before we get into his strengths and weaknesses, I just want to tell you some of my concerns because I, I started the show off by saying that I'm just not buying him in my dynasty leagues. I usually don't like the receivers that are older um, because if you're a 23 year old playing in college football against 17 and 18 year olds, it's just such an unfair advantage. Right. And I understand that this class is older because of the, the, the pandemic year. So I, I understand that, but if you're going to be an older wide receiver prospect, I want to see you completely dominate. Like you be the best player on the field. And I, there were times where Ricky Pearsall did that, but Kate, you, you mentioned the overall numbers. His best season ever was in 2023, 65 catches, 965 yards and four touchdowns. He never had a season in his career with a thousand yards. And that's despite playing with like an Anthony Richardson, uh, in 2022, that's despite playing with Jaden Daniels early in his career at Arizona State. Never had a season of more than five touchdowns, 14 career touchdowns in five seasons. If you're not dominating at the college level, I'm not sure I can expect you to dominate in the NFL. And if you're not going to dominate in the NFL and you're going to be a slot only receiver, I just have some concerns about like how much upside do you really have for me in my dynasty leagues? I think all of that is very fair. Now, before we continue piling on, let's go to his strengths. 
He's got a lot of speed. And I, I mentioned that 441 40 sec or 40 yard dash, 82nd percentile for wide receivers. Interesting a little bit on the slower side in terms of his 10 yard split, 44th percentile at 1.57 seconds. Um, but still a, a ton of burst. You're getting a great athlete. He's got a big cat, uh, big catch radius, great ball tracking and body control. And again, I feel like that's not something that you typically think of is the ball tracking and, mm -hmm. and body control for a, a slot only wide receiver. Um, Pearsall would, was utilized effectively down the field. So like even when he was playing out of the slot function, I think, you know, very well as a deep slot option, as opposed to a guy that, you know, a Malachi Corley, who you're going to play out of the slot. We're going to get you the ball right around the line of scrimmage, and you're going to make a play after the catch. Pearsall, I think, wins more down the field uh, and wins in that way. Uh, in terms of weaknesses, it, you know, not necessarily the most physical player. He's not no. a, a refined route runner. And you mentioned it as a potential problem. Like when you project as a slot only wide receiver and you could get kind of pigeonholed there, it, it, it doesn't give your respective offense as many options in play packages to utilize you yep. at the next level. I do want to give him some credit. He is a, excellent returner so that's going to become more valuable uh with the new kickoff rules he's also been a punt returner averaged over 10 yards uh, per punt return in his career doesn't drop passes either which is very important uh six career drops in five seasons like that's absolutely phenomenal really uh, reliable hands yeah and he does a really good job of like tracking the ball he can make catches over his shoulder uh he, he doesn't have a, a big wingspan. I'm looking at it now, 73 inch wingspan, 30 and a half inch arms, but does do a good job of making some pretty wild catches. I'm sure everybody now has seen his catch against Charlotte, which is one of the best catches I think I've ever seen, but he is a vertical slot receiver who I think has good speed four, four, one. Um, I, I don't know that he always, you he plays fast, but he plays very much in the same speed, which is okay when you're that this fast. I do want to mention something really quickly. I think there was a, a mix up with his 10 yard split at the NFL combine. Mm. The NFL.com webpage was having all sorts of issues with updating times and getting things. They've had a lot of errors. Talked okay. to an NFL scout that had him at one four nine as a 10 yard split. And that lines up more closely with a four, four, one. Right. So I'm not saying that the time is wrong. I'm just saying it doesn't Where? quite match up to, yeah. to, to, to the play to his play speed, but I think he's a good prospect. He's just not somebody that I'm particularly targeting in my dynasty leagues, despite it sounds like he's going to have second round draft capital. He would be a player that I would probably let somebody else draft. He's somebody that I do think is going to be a tremendous asset to his football team. But as we mentioned, the sort of deep slot, uh, you know, a, a deep slot role, not necessarily the most conducive to PPR upside, which no, no. I do think, you know, sometimes with slot receivers, that's going to be the, the bread and butter for fantasy managers is just getting them some of these, these high volume touches. I don't think Ricky Pearsall is that, volume guy. So while he's playing out of the slot, I don't think you're going to get as much volume if he's utilized in a similar manner, which, you know, I, I think his, his best plays came, you know, up the middle and, and down the field. You're not necessarily going to get, I think the kind of consistency that you would like as a really fantasy good. manager, even though that, you know, I, I think he's one of these guys that I really liked the tape but there are some situational question marks that might impact his dynasty value moving forward. And this is uh, really important. I'm glad that you said this. I think the tape is very good, but there's a difference between having good tape and being a really good prospect that translates to dynasty value. And I think Pearsall is, is a good example of that. But I want to get into some more of the numbers, Kate, because I think they're very fascinating. We will talk about that next. This episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. 
That's the winning formula for winning championships, and it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Are you having to turn down the volume because of all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all that screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Kate, let's dive into the advanced numbers for Ricky Pearsall. What do we got? It, overall, a pretty solid analytical profile. 95th percentile over the past two seasons for receiving grade. 94th percentile in terms of separation percentage among wide receivers. 61st in yards per route run. You mentioned those consistent hands, and yes, it absolutely translated here. 85th per, or 98th percentile uh, in terms of overall drop rate. Like Ricky Pearsall, a reliable guy when he is on the field, and I think teams are going to like that an, a lot about him. Below average in terms of yards after the catch per reception, which I think. Um, you know, again, not necessarily going to be the the pinnacle of his game anyway, but overall, a, a pretty solid overall profile, I think, for Ricky Pearsall. Yeah, the the ones that are concerning for me, Kate, is the the dominator rating and the breakout age because yep. both of those fall below the 50th percentile, and that's concerning for me, right? Like, if you're going to be somebody who doesn't have a strong breakout age or didn't dominate at the college level, I want you to be like the supreme athlete that profiles as like an X receiver at the NFL. And while Pearsall has decent size and good speed and the agility stuff was good and the, the, the jumps were good, I I just don't know how much upside there is here. I will say the case, or if you look at like the history of receivers who were uh, 24 during the rookie season, the hit rate's incredibly low. Like it's Keyshawn Johnson, it's I think Brandon Marshall, and then the rest is pretty spotty. There are some red flags in his data profile, or da- you know, just overall analytic profile that do have me scared, despite the PFF grades being very, very good. Well, and I think the PFF grades, they translate very well to kind of what we had mentioned, right? The the tape really clean for Ricky Pearsall. Again, just a very reliable yes. receiver. I really like his footwork. I think he's got mm-hmm. a unique way of manipulating defenders as he's running routes. Uh, saw that translate in terms of his open target rate. Again, 94th percentile in terms of separation percentage. But there's a lot of stuff that, again, isn't necessarily going to show up on the tape. Like, you don't look at the tape and know that he's going to turn 24 heading into his rookie season. You don't look at the tape and and necessarily know that, you know, despite being uh, almost 24 years old, like didn't dom or you know having just turned 23 years old, didn't dominate over younger competitions. Like those aren't things that are going to show up on the tape, right? Like these are ancillary pieces of information that we have to use to complete the profile of Ricky Pearsall. And I think, again, probably one of the biggest, um, most interesting prospects for me that we've broken down so far in terms of like, I really like the player. I really like the tape. The analytical profile is super clean. He's going to have the draft capital. And yet I do have concerns about that translating to top end dynasty value long-term. So we're going to talk about his dynasty value in the the next segment, but I just wanted to ask you, like, 
landing spot wise, is there a, a spot somewhere on day two where you could see him going and becoming a better than expected fantasy asset? I'd love to see him go to the Bengals again. I, I keep mm. kind of giving these slot receivers to the Bengals because they, they have a need there. They obviously have the, the question mark of T Higgins, maybe they go wide receiver in round one, if they're not expecting to have T Higgins with them long-term. Um, but a, a guy that I think could pose a solid threat over the middle of the field, you could throw deep to him, which I think uh, could be a huge asset to Joe Burrow. And it's a team that I think needs some speed and athleticism that Pearsall could offer. What about somebody like Buffalo? Now they have Khalil Shakir who kind of plays mm -hmm. in the slot, but could you maybe look at Pearsall as like a Z receiver and just use his speed down the field? Hear me out, Marcus. Uh, Buffalo Bills, just everybody lines up in the slot. Everybody lines up in the slot. Dalton Kincaid out of the slot. Um, Khalil Shakir out of the slot. Ricky Pearsall out of the slot. Put them all in the slot. Like it, Buffalo Bills just need like 50 slot wide receivers and Josh Allen will absolutely eat. Um, the thing is, if I'm going to put Pearsall as the, the, you know, Z receiver, I still think you need an asset on the outside that can handle the press coverage, can handle the X position. They still need an X. Like, so yeah. I don't necessarily know that I, I trust Pearsall's ability both uh, you know, on the outside, inside, I do think Pearsall could probably play a bit more on the outside than maybe he has historically, but I don't think Pearsall in my brain at least fits necessarily the precise needs of the Buffalo Bills at this time. Yeah. Two more destinations I just want to ask you about. Philadelphia continues to look for a slot receiver. Uh, they have two picks in the, the 50s, I believe. Uh, do you think that would be a good fit for somebody like Jalen Hurts, who is more likely to throw the ball down the field to a slot receiver than maybe other quarterbacks? I would really personally like this fit. Um, I, I think this would be a, an interesting one, to say the least. Again, probably not the best in terms of like, I don't know that there's a really solid landing spot for Pearsall, but I think if there's a team that probably is going to be able to utilize his skill set most effectively, it could be with a quarterback like Jalen, uh, Jalen Hurts, who, you know, they have this established run game. They have, uh, you know, they afford themselves the ability for a play downfield to develop where, you know, Pearsall can play out of the slot, can can run a route, get open downfield. Um, I would really like this, and I think that would probably be an ideal NFL fit. I'm still struggling to figure out the well, best place for his dynasty value. Though. There, there is a team that could be in need of a slot receiver this year that has a very good quarterback that is throwing the ball down the field. Any interest in the Chiefs, like at the bottom around two? I wouldn't be surprised, especially with the – current circumstances surrounding Rashi Rice. Who knows how this situation is going to play out, but they made a contingency plan amidst the concerns for Tyree Kill in the second round. Mm -hmm. Ricky Pearsall, I think, uh, would be a very good fit, obviously. And I, I do think he could be, again, one of these options that could be a very quarterback-friendly weapon down the field. Um, not necessarily like... It, I think you think of, and again, I keep wanting to push him down the field and, and so I, I want to see some intermediate and deep targets for Ricky Pearsall. And I think that's where he's going to win. Uh, you know, I think he's going to win with some of the, the route running defensive manipulation, but still a very different player than the type of deep threat. We're going to consider a Marquise Brown. Like, yes, they're, yes. they're super different players. And, and, Pearsall would offer you, you know, a little bit more of that size component that you're looking for downfield. I would love that fit. All right. Let's talk about his dynasty value currently and some player comps for Ricky Pearsall. We will do that next. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We are discussing the dynasty value for Ricky Pearsall. Uh, Kate, where is he being drafted among rookie receivers currently? Among the, the rookie wide receivers, we do have, um, you know, again, sort of that mid mid sort of tier of wide receivers. Um, obviously, you've got the top three, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, 
Roma Dunze, and then that that second tier Brian Thomas. I'm going to consider, um, but he's you know being drafted on average as like the the wide receiver 12 ish in dynasty startup leagues. Um, what's really interesting is I think his overall draft position um, in the 12th round of dynasty startups overall. Obviously, that's pending landing spot. And I don't know how I feel about it. I'm like Ricky Pearsall again. He has been a guy that throughout my entire evaluation, I am struggling because of the age, because of the lack of dominance in yep. his collegiate career. Those are these two red flags that, again, like you watch the tape and you're, if you watch the tape without being aware of those two things, you're probably going to come out with a very different vision of Ricky Pearsall in terms of dynasty value than you would being aware of those two factors, which do statistically, you know, don't contribute as much to, or, you know, correlate as much with a higher hit rate. And Correct. Correct. so he's a guy that I think, you know, whatever NFL team drafts him, they're going to be getting a very good football player. I think they're going to be getting a, a weapon that, you know, they can open up down the middle of the field. They're getting good athlete, a solid, you know, not the most refined route runner, but I think a solid one in terms of defensive manipulation. But how will it translate to dynasty? And do I like all of the things that I think Ricky Pearsall would be so all of the types of roles that I'm projecting for him at the next level aren't necessarily roles that I can see like being, you know, high volume plus type of situations it yep yep i'm torn so for i like me, the player better than i like the dynasty prospect yeah I, and I'm, I'm with you um for me that's just the spot where i'm going to be drafting running backs instead of some of these receivers because i think i just don't know how well he's going to project in the nfl i think a high-end comp for him and Frankly, I think this is even too high is Calvin Ridley. I think Calvin Ridley wins in the same ways. Calvin Ridley was a little bit more polished coming out of the SEC, but like Pearsall was an older prospect who wins with speed in route running, um, despite the routes being a, maybe a little bit overrated. Uh, I, I Calvin Ridley has been a valuable fantasy asset for what one year in his career, and that was on a, an offense where he was the number one receiver with Matt Ryan. I don't see that being the case for Pearsall. I think he projects as a slot only, which we've mentioned several times, and probably somebody who's going to be more efficient than a target hog. So for me, I want to target running backs in that range after we get outside the top 10 or 11 receivers. So for me, he's somebody I'm just avoiding. If I'm wrong on him, I'm wrong on him. So be it. I'm comfortable with my evaluation here. Um, I'm going to name a couple of players. So right now, uh, in terms of like overall rookie value uh, in Dynasty Startup ADP being right around like, you know, the end of the second round in rookie only drafts, I want to name a couple of players that are in a similar range as Ricky Pearsall, some of which we've talked about already on the show, some of which we haven't, but I'd like to get your thoughts. Uh, would you take Ricky Pearsall or these players? Okay. Um, Roman Wilson. Roman Wilson. Um, Ray Davis, running back Ray Davis. Ooh, Ray Davis, but that one's close. Could be landing spot, but again, yeah. similar age concern. So interesting. Yeah. Um, wide receiver Devontae's Walker. Pierce saw pretty comfortably too. Okay. Uh, Bucky Irving. Hmm. Probably Bucky, but that, I can be talked into either one. Um, Malachi Corley, who we talked Corley, about yesterday. All day. Not even close. Uh, Jalen Polk. Polk. All right. So there are several players being drafted. How about, uh, this is uh, like one of my favorite guys right now. Running back, Audric Estime, Mr. Mm. 471 himself. Estime, pretty comfortably. I think Estime is a little underrated right now. I think the 40 docked him a little too much. Dude, I can't wait to get to this pre-draft profile of Audric Estime because I'm I about know, to go wild. absolutely ham. Um, but I do think that that's kind of an interesting interesting spot for Ricky Pearsall. And again, uh, you know, there's a lot of really interesting wide receivers in this range because there's a lot of 
high upside projecting uh, players that you need to project at the next level in this range. But there's also guys that I think you kind of have a really good idea yep. of what they're going to do at the next level. Pearsall is one of these guys that I feel pretty comfortable with my evaluation of what he's going to do at the next level. Um, and for as many players in this draft class that boast a ton of upside, Pearsall's not not a player with as much upside as I can project with some others in a similar yep. range. All right, that is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Dynasty Football your first listen every single day. Go check out the channel on YouTube. We are free and available on all platforms. Go follow Kate on Twitter, at Kate Majuk. Uh, you can check her out at Pro Football Focus and Behind the Steel Curtain. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. Have a great weekend, and we will see you right back here on Monday.